Hello friends, today we are going to show you how to solve a 1D wave equation using finite difference method. Our objectives are to present a simple 1D vibration problem that is related to vibrations of an elastic string. The physical problem is, is described by a 1D wave equation. We will solve the problem using center difference, finite difference method. We will consider two cases, one is undamped and the other one is damped. Our vibration problem is shown here. We have a elastic string that is fixed at either ends and has a length L. Our assumptions are the thin flexible string has negligible weight the two ends of the string are clamped, so the displacements at either ends are zero. We will consider two cases, the first one without damping and the second one with damping. The initial displacement profile is given and the initial velocity is considered zero. The 1D wave equation is described by this uh, equation 1 as utt equals c squared times uxx. This is a partial differential equation and the problem we are solving is a hyperbolic type of equation. So here u is a function of x and t and u is shows the vertical displacement. c is the wave propagation speed x is the spatial coordinate and t is the time and x varies from 0 to l and time is greater than 0. Also c square is described as equal to t over rho where t is the force of tension exerted on the string and rho is the mass density which is mass per unit length of the string. The boundary conditions are given as u at 0, t equals 0 and u at l, t equals 0. And the initial conditions are given as u at x, 0 equals f of x and ut at x, 0 equals g of x where ut is dou u over dou t. We will simplify this particular case further. We will consider f, f of x not equal to 0 but g of x equals 0. Accordingly, we get uh, utt equals c squared times uxx. The boundary conditions are the same, u at 0, t equals 0 and u at l, t equals 0. And u at x, 0 equals f of x, which is equal to c1 times sine of c2 times pi times x and ut equals x comma 0 equals 0. So here we assumed f of x to be a sine function. To further simplify, let's consider these constants c1 equals 1 and c2 equals 2. And c is the wave propagation speed we'll consider as say 0 0.5. Accordingly, f of x becomes sine of 2 pi x. We will solve the, the partial differential equation using center difference method now. So again, we reproduce this, the original PDE in equation 1, which is utt equals c squared times uxx. Here we replace the time, the second order time derivative and the second order space derivative using center difference approximation as below. So utt becomes uin plus 1 minus 2 times uin plus uin minus 1 over delta t square. Here i represents the spatial location and n represents the time. And likewise we replace uxx by ui minus 1 n minus u times uin plus u plus i plus 1 n over delta x square. 
if we call nu equals c times delta t over delta x where nu is the current or the convection number and if we simplify it further the final form of this equation becomes ui n plus 1 equals 2 times ui n minus ui n minus 1 plus nu square times ui minus 1 n minus 2 times ui n plus ui plus 1 n. The initial conditions uh, we need to simplify it further. So since we know ut at x comma 0 equals 0, we have uh, we convert this into finite difference approximation again. In this case is forward time. So accordingly ui n plus 1 minus ui n over delta t equals 0. And that means ui n plus 1 equals ui n. And for the first time step n equals 1. So ui2 equals ui1. So the second the displacement at the second time step and the displacement at the first time step at the initial time they are the same so for the second case we consider a damped uh, situation in which the waves are getting damped the previous one was an undamped condition so the PDE of this damped uh, situation is UTT plus gamma times UT equals C square times UXX. Here gamma is the damping factor. Again, we replace the second order spatial derivatives derivative and the second order time derivative using centered difference uh, approach and uh, we do the same center difference uh, on the first order derivative ut as well here ut becomes ui n plus 1 minus ui n minus 1 over 2 delta t uh, we multiply this equation by delta t square and we get the next uh, line if we call uh, nu equals c times delta t over delta x where n is the current or convection number we can simplify this equation further and the final form of the equation is given as ui n plus 1 equals 1 over 1 plus 0.5 gamma times delta t times 2 times ui n minus ui n minus 1 plus gamma times delta t over 2 times ui n minus 1 plus n u square times u i minus 1 n minus 2 times u i n plus u i plus 1 n. The final line shows the uh, solution of the wave equation, the finite difference approximation. We can now go back and uh, run this code on MATLAB. So for the first case, which is undamped, we have these parameters here. C, which is the wave propagation speed, is given as 0 0.5 meters per second. And the distance L equals 4. And number of spatial segments is M equals 200. So we get delta X equals L over M. And the total time, let's consider NT as 2 and number of time steps n equals 200 so delta t the time step becomes nt over n so the current number nu equals c times delta t over delta x we need to make sure that the current number does not exceed 1 so initial condition uh, u underscore t n equals 0 and the boundary conditions are 0 since we are fixing the uh, string at either ends. Also, the constant C1, which represents the amplitude of the sine wave, and C2 represents the number of waves. We pick C1 equals 1 and C2 equals 2. 
So the initial conditions are given over here. U i comma 1 equals C1 times sin C2 times pi times xi. And U i comma 2 is the same as U i comma 1 in this case because dou u over dou t equals 0. So the boundary conditions are given as well. And the interior nodes, for the interior nodes, the variation of displacement with time is given here on the next line. So we'll run this uh, code now and look at the uh, graphics. So on the top uh, left hand side, we have the initial uh, displacement profile. On the bottom left hand side, we have the final displacement profile. And at the right hand side, we see the variation of displacement with time. Since we set time equals 2 seconds, we can see the animation until we hit t equals 2 seconds. We can now vary some parameters and rerun this case. Let's increase the wave propagation speed from 0 0.5 to 2 meters per second. And uh, let's increase the amplitude C1 from 1 to the amplitude factor from 1 to 2. And uh, the other constant C2. This controls the number of waves from 2 to 4. In the previous case, we just had to note that the current number we got is 0 0.25, which is lesser than 1. So the condition was stable. So we'll rerun this case. And again, the current number is 1, so which is still fine. So in this case, the, the number of waves are higher and the waves move faster as well. Also, you can notice that the amplitude is higher in this case as well. We can now go back and uh, um, this step for the initial conditions is the same as you have seen for the undamped case. So we have to note that the center difference method, this we use center difference for space and time, is an explicit method and is conditionally stable. The stability criteria is given as uh, c equals u delta t over delta x or in other words um, the current number should be lesser than or equal to 1. The error is of the order of delta t square plus of the order of delta x square but when we have to make sure that when we use the boundary conditions or the initial conditions um, we have to make sure that the finite difference approximation we use is second order to make sure the whole uh, solution is second order accurate. To summarize what you have done so far, we presented a 1D wave equation that describes the vibration of an elastic string. We considered two cases, one without damping and one with damping. We solved the problem using center difference method. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. If you have any questions or comments, please post it. Thanks for watching the video.